at will. Fix your techie woes, then we'll break things and we'll make these till we're all together raking and we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bilge tank. In, in the, the big bilge tank. tank. Come and join our pirate crew in, in the, the big, big bilge, bilge tank. tank. We will show you what to do. And we'll hack it till we crack it and we'll tell the world about it and forget to tidy up. That's why it's now a bilge tank. Ah, good afternoon everyone, welcome to Bilge Tank 112. I'm Matt, I do the customer support here and I am thrilled to be yeah. here to talk retro games. You're not Phil or John Otania. Where? When? What? Who I, are you? I, I, I'm him. <laughs> I'm not him. Hey Matt. <laughs> How's it going Paul? Not too bad. Excellent. So yeah, before I rudely interrupted you, you're about to explain what you do here. What do I do? I do the customer support, so if you've sent us an email or a ticket as we seem to call them internally, you've probably had it answered by me, so hi everyone, now you can put a face to the name, I hope I've helped you out, if I haven't, shout at me, welcome. Yeah, so yeah, you're here today because Tanya basically said, retro gaming, <laughs> meh, meh. Uh, whereas I love retro gaming, oh, so I like love it. Retro gaming, uh, headphone amps, mechanical keyboards, you, you have a wide range of geeky interests. I do, and I'm yeah. proud of it. Cool. So what are we doing here today, man? Uh, well, I, we've got some things in boxes Ooh, shady, that look extremely things. exciting, especially this one. Yep. I, I grew up dreaming of one of these. I had the Spectrum. Not a poor alternative, but everyone who had a Speccy really wanted a C64. Don't hate me! I was, a, yeah. I, was, I was a weirdo, I had a, an Atari 1040 ST, Ooh. which was kind of, um, Atari ST was versus Amiga though, well, that's like a generation yeah, later, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. you weren't yeah. there when it was like real man, <laughs> I, I was weird, I had an MSX, Toshiba MSX, Ooh. so proper niche, and yeah. then went sideways to a C64, yeah. nice, so if you're out there, tell us all about your kind of journey from early consoles to where you are now, yeah. which is usually Raspberry Pi, I think for most of us, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so the C64 Mini has come out, and it has it has kind of an interesting backstory, um, which we'll go into in hopefully a way that doesn't get sued. Um, <laughs> but it's worth talking about, and we're going to look at these and discuss what they do and don't do, play a little bit of gaming, but then delve inside them, and then talk about the kind of biz side of it a bit, and then you're going to talk about what projects you've got on the go, yeah? Okay, there is Brilliant. a box here with things in, I'd love to. Cool. So this is very much in the same vein as the... Um, the Nintendo um, consoles, they did the NES and the, the SNES. Yep. Um, or NES and SNES. It says the world's best selling home computer reborn. I think that's thoroughly in doubt now. I think yeah. Raspberry Pi's just yeah. eclipsed it <laughs> in, in kind of every incontrovertible way. Because the, the C64, the sales numbers varied very wildly from like 12 million to 24 million. And somebody, there was a really interesting article of somebody who used wartime analysis of tank serial numbers to work out how many were being produced, to look at serial numbers on Xboxes to work out how many have been produced and where they've been produced. Oh wow! So from a small sample of serial numbers, you can work out how many are actually being made and the rate of it. Okay. So somebody's done similar things, I think, for the C64 to work out what the actual sales figures yeah. actually were, rather than marketing hyperbole. Yeah, but yeah, Raspberry Pi C64, it's... Uh, it's going to topple close game. incontrovertibly at some point, and depending on the metric, it's already toppled. Wow. Anyway, sorry, I went a bit full so on geek. How much are these? They are, I think, about £70, pounds, £65, £70, pounds, right. pounds, depending on where you shop. So similar kind of ballpark to the, to the Nintendo ones. Yep. Yeah. yep. Are they in the same kind of demand? Because I know those and yeah. the Nezzas just sold Super out. Super popular, aren't they? I think it's going to be an order of magnitude difference. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we do an unboxing of this? Shall we do it. Let's get it? in. Yes. If everyone can put the hashtag unboxing in chat so we just kind of <laughs> go up the YouTube ranks, that would be amazing. But, yeah, I was a C64er. I actually got the C64 wedge that was more of beige colour. Yeah. But I remember my friend, his, his dad was an international businessman. Ooh. And so he got one of the first C64s at a games convention. Oh, nice. Um, and it was weird. That is sexy. The C64 he had was like a deeper brown, even than this. Ooh, nice. Some people have said this is a pretty deep brown compared to the C64 they had. But originally they, they were that deeper brown. Mm. They were very early units. And I think his dad, back in the 1980s, paid like a £1,000 for it. 
which was, yeah, you put that into dollars today, it's yeah. going to be... A lot of dollars. Tanya, are you up for some researching? This competition Pro theme joystick. That is <laughs> in nineteen eighty two amazing. One thousand dollars. How much would it be worth now? I'm on an Apple thing, I can't look at Apple. I feel like a giant. <laughs> I've got or some kind of some kind of confused giant because I've got an oversized Lego cut. Uh, let me just throw this into the mix. And, and, a, and a tiny C sixty four. Sandy and Sandy and Retro Rand. Yeah. Drink me. So, <laughs> well, so the first thing that really kind of upset me about this, yeah, the close up, Doong. there we go. So, yeah. So they have this thing, and they have the keyboard. They went to the trouble of making this big case, and then the keyboard doesn't work. You have to put an external uh, keyboard in there. Mm. It does work. I can, I, can, I can hear it. I can hear the keys tapping. It must be mechanical. <laughs> but what I want us to attempt to do is internally over the next few weeks see if we can make a working keyboard out of this by just dremeling apart that keyboard. They are quite small. I was, it is. That's okay. We're going to have to do a lot of cutting on that because it is. It looks like one piece at the I've moment. Got, I've got a scroll saw. Ooh. But it's so yeah, we're... making a little PCB for it or some pro like tack switches. Uh, tack switches, uh, contact switches. We can do those like the ones that are on the chip. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the, the me membrane things we could do. Something arduino e to control it sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. Well, a pie, because then we could put retro pie uh, in the guts. Of course. Yeah. 1982. Yeah, 1982. Uh, I'm genuinely dollars. tempted to get one just for that joystick. <laughs> That's a thing of beauty. That's nice, isn't it? Ah, $2,536. Wow. So I've gone off YouTube on this and I have no idea oh. how to go back. Oh. <laughs> any any other eighties kids out there that that remember these as fondly as I do? I was thinking, were they yeah. never clicky? I I prefer I like the leaf switch ones just for the silence. I, I, the micro yeah. switch ones were good and they had that click to them. But yeah, uh, yeah they, they, I love the silent ones. Cool. I think Tanya needs to YouTube again. Uh, yeah, I do. All your buttons are wrong. Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Fix the thing. What's, what's wrong? <laughs> Safari for the thing and then it all went wrong. Oh. Cool. Hey, let's do this, Matt. Let's yeah. get this plugged in. Uh, right. So we get rid of the box. And the box. So it doesn't it takes a USB oh, micro USB power supply, which we've all got. Yep. I'm pretty sure around these parts. I will uh, let's let's plug it in. Probably yeah. 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 Uh, is there a power supply plugged in uh, at the moment? I oh, know I is there not one in the box? No, no. No? Oh, Takes micro USB though. Oh, micro USB, yeah, there's one line about. Here is cool. a. Oh, we're so well prepared. <laughs> As ever. Right, here we go. Uh, I'm back, sorry. Ooh. Cool. So it's HDMI, HDMI. only. Here we go. There is no composite whatsoever on it. Uh, should we not uh, add controls first? Uh, I'm sure it'll pick up a USB device. Yeah, there's a power switch anyway, so we can. There we go. Yeah, this was track and field, track and field joystick. Because, yeah, the, the cheap ones, the ones with kind of the full airplane oh. flight. Yes, yeah, triggers on the break. top, and yeah, really, they broke way too often. Oh. Uh, but yeah, the I remember these just being. Uh, they were they were, the Nokia thirty one ten before the Nokia thirty one ten. Yeah, now this does have differences because I remember the buttons being bigger. Yes. Yeah, and not having all the other buttons until mm. much later on in the industry. So it's, it's not exact one to one replica. Oh, you'd like some. It, it's close enough to, to set Shutting my nostalgia down. glands oh, flowing that... fully, though. Oh, does the power LED not actually work then, or is it just very dumb? Well, have I given you a dud power supply? It powers up, so yeah, if there's no LED. It powered up before. It was showing menus and asking for languages and things. <laughs> Facebook keys on the right. <laughs> Showing you a youth there. Come on. <laughs> Here we go. Yay. Oh, cool. Yeah, joystick is doing things. Yeah. Right. Uh, English, please. Yeah. I think we'll swap this one down here and have Ooh. Facebook keys. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, is it, uh, is it doing anything? Can you select? Uh, I can move up and down. Uh, uh, is it that? There are a multitude of buttons which are... Ah! 
Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh well, we can. We have games. So game selector. Nice. What have we got? Oh, oh we've got a basic interpreter on there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bold, Boulder Dash. Dash, Boulder Dash C64 was one of my favourite games ever. Well, let's. Uh, is it? Was it this one? Or, yeah. Uh, ah. I, I don't fancy playing this with the delay. But, uh, yeah. No, it's going to be interesting. Let's. Uh, it, uh, oh, I'm, am I on there? I'm no, assuming wait, wait, I am. Wait, wait. There you go. Oh, there's go, me. Go, go. Don't land on me. See, I was too much a BBC kid. Uh, this is wrapped onto me. Yeah. I love well, here's what here's what you were kind of you know copying. Yeah, this is oh, this is a challenge. I, am I winning? Oh, I think I have to collect those. I am a gamer, I promise. <laughs> You're a gamer with a thirty second time delay on your screen. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a quicker one over here which might That's actually better. be useful. Oh, oh, I'll watch that screen instead. <laughs> okay. Wow. There we go. So Two it seems to, play, seems to play pretty authentically. Oh, it, it, Let me take feels this nice. Off. Please do. Show me what I was doing wrong. Yeah, that delay is just... Oh. <laughs> ah, it's not, it's not quite right. <coughs> My joystick's a bit loose. Sorry, this is all wrong. It's horrible. <laughs> I cannot tolerate this. I might have to try it later on something that's not going through two layers of... Oh, oh disaster! That's how to be pretty much of a menu. Uh, I think it's the the three button lines button. button. There we oh. go. Uh, there is another option hidden underneath us. I think that you could. What okay. select? Uh, oh. Any of the fire buttons. I think. There we go. Oh, okay. Mhm. Mm <coughs> California games as well. Chip shows confusion. Yeah, so it's got <laughs> it's got a good set of games here. It's even got some games from Gremlin, where I was the webmaster. Back in 1999. Oh, Gremlin. But these were way before my time. That sounds like Phil's evil twin. Cy <laughs> Cybernoid. <laughs> I remember having... Uh, was it Premier Manager? You mm -hmm. could put in the Gremlin phone number and your goalie would get 99 stats. <laughs> yeah, no. It's football Manager games. Um, didn't used to like them. Used to play quarter um, head coach. Oh, yeah. Head coach back on the C64, ah. which was same thing, but for American football, okay. which you know, oh. very interesting. So how many games did you get on this? 64. 64, oh, 64 okay. games, how much? Right. Yeah. So these games are licensed, I think, through, there's a German company that has a lot of the rights to these, and Retro Games Limited have done a deal with them. Have to be careful about the company names here. Yeah. Or summer games. So while Sunday's going through there and picking a good game, um, there was the Spectrum Next, was it? The Spectrum Vega? What's the one that's really delayed? Vega. Yes. The Vega's really delayed. Part of the reason where there was a couple of the team, I think it was kind of the technical peeps, left and kind of took their ball with them. And they, looks like they set up the project for this. Right. But while the Vega's still lingering around and getting increasingly harried and saying, we're going to deliver, while being sued multiple ways. Yeah. They've obviously done a good deal here, got into production and released the C64 Mini, and it looks pretty successful. So, don't know what the story is there, maybe in time we'll find out yeah. what went on behind the scenes completely. But it's good to see they they can get something released. Absolutely. So, there was a few people kind of saying, oh, this project, it's the same people involved in this, so beware. But instead of kind of going the Kickstarter disappointment route, yeah. they've just gone, right, I don't know whether they found backers or something. But they've just gone the right, we'll get this produced en masse, get it out there. And they've shared factory photos and everything, and it's out. And it's kind of like there, buy it. Best proof that this project will not fail, it's there to buy. Yeah. So, yeah, kudos. Oh, here we go. Right. What? I'm going to stick the... No idea what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, entering your name. Ah, virtual keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There we go. No what? I don't know what to do now. Oh, what do I do? Tell you what, Matt, you play the games. Oh, Sunday, you can do something I know you're good at. Do you want to start disassembling oh. this while Matt plays it? While <laughs> while Matt plays. I will give it yeah. a go. Let's cool. see how long it takes for it to die on me. We have the cool driver. We will be BBB. Yeah, no keyboard. You can put a USB keyboard in here. I'm going to assume that. Yeah, there we go. Oh, Screws on the screen keyboard. Keyboard. Wow. keyboard. Yeah, although it's. Uh, Something of a mystery is to. That's probably hidden under. Actually, getting thing. rid of it. Yeah, let me just bring it up on here for you, and you can hopefully see what you're doing. Okay. Um. Uh, there you go. 
Okay, right. Uh, so enter and escape. Excellent. But how to actually exit the key? Well, let's. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No. Nope. I'm stuck in the keyboard. Do you not play? Do you do both of the corner buttons? What's the name? No. No. They just swap between keyboards. Buttons. I wonder if, ah, the menu button gets rid of it. Excellent. Cool. Right, well, let's try and be Great Britain. West Germany. Or West This, West. Ga this game is showing its age. Have we, uh, play I'm... four into your name? Ah, yes. Yeah. I think we've started. Oh. Lighting ceremony. What's the summer games? <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah. Absolutely no Boris Johnson on a zip line. <laughs> <laughs> no dropping of the Olympic flame here. Mm -hmm. No fried doves. Oh, the triple jumps, oh, right. Is it? Do you think it's a waggler? This is a waggler, it's got to be. I think it's a waggle, 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 jump, jump, jump. I agree. Probably. How are you getting on there, Sandy? The, um, the thread on one of the screws is like totally... The, 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 he the, okay. the head's mashed. Yeah, the head's like stripped on it. Come on, come on. Force it. Um, well, at least it was valid. I'll take it. Good. Okay. 14 meters. Is it going to come out? Come on. No, it's not coming out. Well, that doesn't look no. so good. <laughs> may have to snap this. May have to snap it to get it open. God. You sure? Yeah. The head's totally. Oh. Scrubs unless we have like tiny. If, if toys with tiny, a bit more leverage are. Do you have, do you have the Negisaurus? I uh, don't have them here. Man. Players? Needle nose. Ah. Needle nose. Ah. Ah. It's got the engineer ones. Zoom in, Sandy, show us your pain. Oh. No, that's just not gonna... That is looking tricky. Can you it? <laughs> it's gonna be interesting to see how much of this this joystick can take. No. You think it's going to go? Yeah, I think it's going to, I'm going to have to I'm snap not that. sure this has got the metal rod go going up the stick that the Competition Pro had. Uh, there we go. Oh! Okay, it didn't come too badly. Right. Ooh, oh, the LED okay. should be working at least. Yeah, in theory. Yeah. So what we've got oh, there, we've got okay. the plates. So the, um, so the LED is on a little GST connector. Let's uh, take that out. Come back out of this and see what else we've got. I was hoping for. Am I allowed to say Turrican? I've said it now. Yeah, Turrican's on there, I think. Thing on the spring. Who dares wins? Wins the games. So that's the so the the front half of the shell is basically just the LED. And well, that that keyboard looks bit. eminently cuttable. I yeah. think we can do things with that. Yeah. So what we've seen there is the bare plastic, and then the key side is painted and then laser etched. Ooh, okay. uh, they released some videos of this. So the the brown stuff's paint, is it? Yeah. The keys are actually white. Yeah. Like you can see on the back, and then they, do they spray it or something? Yeah, spray it. Right, okay. That's interesting. Fantastic. Oh. Yeah. And what have we got on the bottom? Um, <laughs> some weights. <laughs> That's right. No, got, oh, That's, it's got the quality weights. Yeah. Uh -huh. all, all the best keyboards have uh, weights <laughs> on them. Right, I'm just going to swap the gaming over to there and bring it up the close up camera. Ah. There. I think we're there just, go, like, again, just steel oh. weights. Um, Safe game. What was that? Impressive. What is was that? It? No, that doesn't make sense, does it? Take it out, let's have a look. It's intriguing. Let's have a look. Is there anything on the bottom of the case? No, nothing. Bizarre, I wonder what that is. It looks it's another a speaker little. or a vibration motor or something. They wouldn't have haptic feedback, would it? <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like a reset button or something. It's a tack switch, isn't it? Yeah, it's a button, yeah. definitely, yeah. Oh. Weird. Like, how do you... What oh. the heck? What the heck? Take the label off, let's see. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> let's see where that leads. This is intriguing. Maybe that's well stuck on. Screwdriver, spudge it. Spudge it, spudge it. Oh. So uh, there is a pokey hole there. Weird. So a, a reset or odd. other otherwise. Yeah, but no, mm. no kind of like evidence that it's actually there at all. 
<laughs> That's weird. Cool. Right. Anything else, or should we take a look at the PCB? Um, let's have a look at the PCB. This is where it might go horribly wrong when we're trying to. <laughs> so there's nothing much on the back there. This. Yeah, bunch of capacitors by the looks of it. Okay. Right. Oh yeah, go through it. Still working. Still working fine. Bounder. Yeah, it's in it's in order, so Turrican doesn't appear to be there. But you can sideload. Oh, okay. You can sideload images onto it Whoop. through, I think, a USB key. Okay. So USB stick in the side. Yeah. <coughs> and and copy the can... files over, or format them a certain way. And yeah, you will be fine. Oh, Hunter's no moon. problem there. Hang oh. on, I'm going to disconnect you for a second. No. Oh. There you go. Impossible mission was great. Yes. Stay a while. Stay <laughs> forever. So that's the that's the back of the case with um is that an air vent or speaker grill or <laughs> I'm gonna uh, guess it's some kind of cooling. Yeah, air ventilation. Vent. Bit of Yeah. There's nothing in the top for airflow to happen though. Here we go. There's the PCB. Okay, so it's an all winner. A twenty. It's a honking great all winner. Whoop. Oh, wrong way. Whee. Uh, storage yep. there. So it's got the NUN storage, which is the Toshiba chip at yeah. the top. And then it's got the RAM at the bottom. Which is not visible at the moment of that one there. Yep. Power management top right. Oh, you yeah. You can tell by all the inductors and things. And by the fact it's next to the power. Yeah. Usually a pretty good indication. Sensible. And then we have this large SD slot there. Slot. So <clears throat> the story is... Uh, through watching all the YouTube videos. Um, this was originally going to be the way to update the firmware. Right. Before they had the flash on board. Yeah, 8-bit guys video. So I presume you can solder one on there and stick stuff on it, can you? Don't know if it'd work, because it depending on the firmware, kind of looking for it, maybe. Yeah. So unless the firmware is looking for it, I doubt it'd do anything. Yeah. And obviously, yeah, the landing for the other RAM chip. And then a boot and recovery. Oh, uh, yeah. So that recovery might be, ooh, where's the header for the reset? Is it right? Is so the JST header nothing. for the reset chip right underneath? Well, it's done that? nothing. That's interesting. Yeah, in future firmwares maybe. I believe yeah. it is. Yeah, that, they yes, the uh, slightly done. offset. What's what's that? Yeah. The JST header. Yeah, show it. Show on edge. See if you can see the reset ooh. chip and the because that would solve oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, power droid. <laughs> <coughs> there you go, yeah. So, so that's it looks the like mystery button header. And There's another little inductor there by the looks of it. Yeah. Cool. So not a lot to that. And certainly they could have gone with a, long, a much smaller case. I think from the size of the case they might have been aiming for a working keyboard at one point. <laughs> but then there seems to be no landings for such things on the board, so maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> cool. It's resilient, it came back. <laughs> okay, right. That's all right. We're fine. Just shorten out the HDMI pins for for the <laughs> <laughs> for the fun. No, I'm trying to capture robots. <laughs> there we go. Actually, I wonder if I short the SD pins, then that might tell us if they are actually <coughs> connected. <laughs> You're the kid who licks nine volt batteries, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, car batteries are licked. Oh, good grief. Yeah, well, this, I'm not joy sure. this joystick is too twitchy. What's I can't do fine control on it. No. What's what have you done now? What, what's I was this? capturing a robot. What's this? That's the scene for the second gram chip that oh, isn't okay, there. Right, Don't okay. lick it. I'm I wasn't, playing. I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right. I think we've explored Just, kind of most of the interesting stuff there. What's, what's that header for the one on the edge there? There's another unpopulated header there. Yes, yeah. J32. <clears throat> so jumper might be a dip switch. Yeah. It says NSRC1 plus. Weird. NSRC or? That's strange. Yeah. NSRC. Strange. Okay. Don't know. Near side remote control. The tracers run to the chip by the looks of it, so... 
Okay, so some kind of GPIO, IR, who a knows? Programming header or something? Open the joystick. <clears throat> I, I, I right. approve of this idea. Yes. This means can't play the games. Oh, oh no, my screwdriver's not long enough, I don't think. Huh. Do it. Uh, Hurt it, Sandy. Uh, Is it working? That's the downside of these type of screwdrivers. And, and well, who's doing that? Should we look at the keyboard and the potential? Yeah, let's let's do it. Yeah. Let's see. Shall we? Uh, I've probably got another small screwdriver here. We can have a go at taking this off. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So it looks like there's space here to get between the keys, which is a good start. I agree. And the keys have cavities in them, which makes them great for putting some kind of mount or switch in there. Ah. Yep. And it, they look kind of flat from the inside, but yeah. they're small enough that we could maybe fill them with epoxy or similar, so you get some kind of pressure. Yep. And they are about the right size for kind of the normal 6mm tack switches. Yeah. Which I believe I have some of in here. If we really? Break into <laughs> this early. Well, they're the, the rubberized ones, but <coughs> I've got they one will, that's not. They will be indicative. Indeed. Yeah. Well, they're exactly the same size as the. There we go. Okay. That's, that's probably going to work. All Look right. at that. Uh, can I get it in there? Oh, there we go. So it's it's not going to be too far off if we use those switches. That'll be okay. Yeah. That's entirely plausible. Yeah, probably excellent. with protoboard. So I think yeah, scroll saw or Dremel to slip off the keys. I agree. Let's take off Archie's Facebook keys. <laughs> Smart. Here we go. Car Sandy. No, I can't get in. Screwdriver's not long enough. Make it long enough. <laughs> <laughs> is the extender no use in there? I don't think it's going to help really, the extender. It's yeah. quite thick. So you go a, a small row of, of Facebook keys. Uh, it might just about help actually. That's yeah. True. I think one thing the 8-bit retro thing brought up was the keyboard, because they laser etch from the top, they haven't got the side decals on the ah, bottom. Of course. Yeah. So you don't know your alternatives, which is why you only have odd numbers on your Facebook keys. They I don't know, was that a thing before there? I, I believe they because you could shift modify, so you, you had F2 on the front and F4 on underneath the F3. Mm -hmm. Right. No, we nearly see. got this bad boy out no, of here. No, it's not coming out. Is it snap time again? <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to snap four screws. Opposite corners open. Yeah. No. Mm. Okay, no, so there, we, there was the original keyboard. Yeah, some, it's a mystery what's inside it. Yeah, there you go, you can... Uh, it's got the... It was indeed a front print for the other... For the F2, the F4. Yeah. Cool. Proof oh. positive. Yeah. But obviously with the laser they couldn't really do that at an angle. Yeah. Reliably. Definitely. So that's definitely a justifiable decision there. Can't see how they'd manage that otherwise. Uh, it's gonna well. I mean, there'll be the plate with all the switches on underneath. That will definitely cut into individual keys. Although it's gonna be some very tricky, careful cutting. It's gonna be beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's quite. It's very solid plastic as well. So I don't know how it would carve up. But yeah, that's doable. A very thin cutting. You need a dialing one then to actually use it, but that's okay. Mm. Yeah. I so. Yeah. How would you actually connect it to the switchers? That would be the tricky bit, wouldn't it? Kind of like somehow connecting the keys to well, it's It's going to need a separate mm -hmm. switch plate underneath, yeah. and these are just yeah. going to have to sit on top. Yeah. I think, given the size of it, that's the only way it's going to work. Yeah. So, so I reckon to, we can knock out a dirty PCBs thing for this. Yeah, but I was thinking you might have to like 3D print some kind of like adapter that fits into the, the bottom of the key. And then it has like a little circle well, for, a, for a tack switch or something underneath that maybe. I mean that'd be advanced. Matt was just going to go with epoxy. Yeah, just yeah. fill them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fill them yeah. with something. It'll be glue so gun even, glue. But, yeah. <clears throat> but it, you won't see that, so you can pretend it's not there once it's all closed up and sexy looking. Mm. Like Could so many hacks. Switch. Right. So there we go. It's cool. it's you know an easy way to get started with C64. It's got a good collection of games. Does what it says on the tin. 
has some disappointments, but glad it's here and has been Absolutely. released. Absolutely, and the, the the basic is interesting. I'm really glad they've included that, and that could yeah. be a lot of fun for people. And all fully licensed legally as well, mm. which yeah, fantastic. I think uh, is better than the approach taken by some of the Spectrum mods, which were we're going to include the games if anyone wants to complain and get it taken off. Yeah, <laughs> which was a solution, but yeah, possibly Perhaps not the best. Possibly not the best one. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Right. So we're going to talk about Game Boy stuff briefly. Yeah. Did we? I think the SNES has been done to death. So we'll we'll look at that at the end for more hacking potential. Yeah. But in the meantime, Matt, do you want to talk us through some of your current projects? I would be delighted. I'm afraid some of these are on hold. If any of you guys out there have any advice on how I can fix some of this stuff, please shout up. But currently at the moment, I think the most exciting one, or the one that excites me the most, is. Uh, is this perhaps I should do close up cam? Let's see. You can go. oh slowly see a PSP appearing like this fin of a shark. Excuse me, C sixty four joystick. You, you can zoom out a bit if you want. Uh, which one's the magic zoom? But nah, there we go. Woof. The wide. So a PSP. The intention being to use the Hyperpixel and the Pi 3 with the, the Wi-Fi, yes it is indeed a PSP, yes lots of hot glue will be used <laughs> with the USB and Ethernet headers removed from a Pi so it actually fits we have some uh, slots cut in the bottom so that the ports will be all accessible when it's closed the trouble I've come up against is, and oh, this is why all this little happy fringe of wires is here. I'm trying to find a way of connecting the hyperpixel to the Pi. The trouble is for the hyperpixel to be centered in the middle of the screen like so, sexually masked off with the electrical tape there, which looked better than I thought, is offset just slightly. It, it ends up being around there so it's not directly over the GPIO header. Not killed one at all yet. This one still works, touch wood. So yeah, what I've started to think about doing is I'm going to do some serious hacking of this 40 pin GPIO cable just to make it dead short uh, yeah basically and uh, I'm also going to separate every single strand <laughs> so that it can be off at a slight angle it's also going to have to be twisted around like that since you can't reverse mount these things the other option is I work out which cable goes to where and reverse mount this, which yeah. is a headache. I mean, the soldering you've done already is pretty majestic. <laughs> <laughs> High, highest quality. Yeah. Highest quality soldering. Uh, those burn marks came from the removal of the GPIO in the first place, honest. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But yeah, that's, that's ongoing, isn't it? Yeah, this is very much ongoing. I, I mean, I do finds. have the... We have some... Uh, Button boards, which are going to be the D-pad and the square, circle, cross, and triangle. Need a few ones. Indeed, yeah. uh, the Power Boost 1000C, which is going to handle the charging and the powering, mm -hmm. along with uh, the well, battery. Although we should which have the Lifeway charge them soon. Yes, which, which be. I will be yeah. happy to switch out in it place might actually of. Actually, be not useful here because the clearance and things but maybe yes I also if it is a shim I won't have the GPIO so yep. it might be a bit trickier to mount that one yeah uh, what else have we got and uh, oh, it is in there yes the Teensy <laughs> LC which was going to uh, do the buttons and with any look the existing analog stick which does just have four contacts I was just hoping to be able to wire that up to the Teensy yeah, should be able to do uh, So, yeah, with any look. And it, it'll be interesting to compare it to the sort of emulation that you, in theory, can get on a PSP itself, just with the, the, the custom firmware and the installing of emulators. Yeah. I need to find a PSP at some point that works still. I think every Extend Extra was my favourite <laughs> game on that. Obscure Japanese game that sold about 10 copies over here. Oh, ah, I will look into that one. That's not mm. one I've played. Yeah. It takes a while to work out what the heck is going on. Okay. But then it's kind of you start making things explode, and you kind of vaguely get a sense why, and it's uh, it's good for the brain. Excellent. Yeah. Fantastic. What else? What else have we got? We've also got the uh, the classic DMGO, DMGO. wall 
uh, DMG01 shell. Uh, is, that a, is that an eBay special? Level? It is indeed, yeah. exactly yeah. an eBay yeah, special. I've, I've it was had a few of them. Nice and cheap. Um, so, we have some... Uh, have we got anything else? Uh, the screen for it, which I... Unfortunately, a hyperpixel will not fit. I, I did look. It's actually wider than the, uh, the Game Boy shell, so I had to go on and get another eBay special just so it had the smaller driver board but this one should fit fine with a bit of luck so is uh, this uh, pretty much a DS type screen not DS um, it, I think it's uh, it's billed on eBay as a reverse king camera so that's, screen it's a bit bigger I think than a, a GBA screen yes and okay. it's, it's a bit bigger but it, it should be just about right to fit <laughs> as you can see yeah. although I'm going to have to do some dremeling of this case to, uh, to fit it in. Uh, PSP won't work with the Model A. I would rather not use a Model A. The whole reason that I wanted the 3 uh, is to get the Wi-Fi in there the and for the quad-core, yeah. for the extra yeah. power and uh, just general better emulation. Yeah, I think Archie's suggestion of like a, a custom PCB that just kind of shifts the the header slightly yep. is I a good one. I would love just to do that. I did way. think about doing that with the Pico Hat Hacker. Yeah. But uh, it would have been a bit, uh, yeah. a bit I think, tricky. I think a custom one that kind of gets both lined up exactly where you need oh, them would be, the would be fantastic. We're going to send off the um, C64 keyboard for a dirty PCB special, then we can do that. Oh, ah, well. excellent. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll work out my measurements then. That would be yeah, brilliant. If you work out measurements and where which pins go to which, we can give it a swing. Fantastic. Yeah. Let's yeah. try it. Because you won't be the only person interested in that. No, I, yeah. I agree. Okay. Yeah, well, this is um, across here this, this way. Um, this is a, a Game Boy that I modded. Um, essentially, the only the only original thing in, inside that is the um, the actual PCB itself um, and the display as well, obviously. Yeah. Um, so I've put a backlight in, uh, a yellow backlight. Um, the case is like a, a custom one. It's got a glass um, screen cover. Oh cover. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's got new kind of rubberized buttons on it. Um, I was wondering about those. The appearance is yep. not the standard. It's it's got a beefier amplifier in it. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's Just got, fantastic. Yeah. It's um, what else has it got? It's got a low battery um, LED. Um, it's got random yellow LEDs that are wired up to various points on the PCB. Um, yep. Just to like light the case up. Um, and other stuff that I can't remember. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and it runs for about uh, 12 or 13 hours on a car battery. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. As long as he hasn't licked it first. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I don't think it actually draws much more power than it did originally, really. Mm -hmm. Cool. Because, um, I mean, it's just a few LEDs, basically. Yeah. Um, the amplifier's the thing that's going to probably draw a bit more power. Um, but compared to backlight, mm. backlight and screen. Yeah, not so bad. Yeah, um, I had actually cool. heard that. I mean, I don't know if this is a good, but I believe you can get a custom PCB for these uh, that will fit the compute chip in. Yes, which would be one way of doing it. Although I believe they're, they're not all, particularly cheap. Yeah, there's quite a few projects going on at the moment. Yeah, there's um, there's a com company in America called Kitchbent. A um, bit of an odd name, but um, I was actually reading that backwards on your transparent <laughs> case. Right, <laughs> but the. Um, They've got loads of um, stuff for doing kind of Game Boy mods, like everything yeah. you can think of. Um, I think in, in the UK we have Deadpan Robot as well. You yep. keep seeing yeah. them at shows. Yeah. Uh, Galaxy Gaming I've come across a couple of times as well. In fact, I think they're local to us here in Sheffield. Yeah. Um, where's Ooh, Game Boy? Sorry, this is just enthralling watching this. <laughs> but yeah, they've got loads of kind of custom PCBs for um, like yeah. that. Oh, that's a good price, although I'm not sure how shipping from America would be. I was looking at those on eBay. They're about 19, 20 quid on eBay. I think yeah. they've got some Pi things as well, some like PCBs to mount a Pi on yeah, and various things like that. Um, and that's where I got the clear case from as well, um, mm. and the buttons, in fact. Cool. Um, so they've got a load of good stuff. I'm just going to see if I find my cases I got from Deadpan at a show. Oh, well, you yes. tear that open and the other one. Yeah, let the possibilities. Unbox the the micro snares. Yeah, um, yeah, the other one that I did was um, 
a Game Boy Advance with um, the display out of Game Boy Advance SP, but it's the AGS 101 yep. display. Um, so essentially the... Actually backlit and not sidelit. Yeah, the Game Boy Advance SP had two different types of display. The first version Ooh. of it had a really, really rubbish kind of front lit display. Yeah. That just, I think it actually looked worse than a non-backlit So display. much light bleed, so was, much light oh, it bleed. it was terrible. Um, but they kind of upgraded it to, to a model called the AGS 101, which had a proper backlit display. Um, and Shiny it's, blue. It's actually possible to take that display out of the SP and with a bit of dremeling of the inside of the case to fit it in the Game Boy Advance. And it's like the ultimate Game Boy for me because um, I love the form factor of the Game Boy Advance. Oh, it's um, probably it's, the most comfortable handheld I've ever played yeah, on. Yeah, it's a yeah. lovely size and it's just nice having the controls on the other right. side. Um, but the I display didn't. wasn't very great on it. Um, so if you stick the Game Boy Advance SP AGS 101 display in it, then it's like the ultimate Game Boy. Really. Yeah, um, I do remember back in the day I actually bought the uh, the original screen light mod for, for mine. Uh, and I, it worked, although I did kill a couple of the non-reflective bits of plastic that you had to put over the screen yeah. um, due to ineptitude, basically. Yeah. I then took the thing on a tour around Australia and uh, headbutted it in a fit of peak playing uh, Metroid Fusion. So don't do that. Nice work. Yeah, it, it was. Was it just kind of was it bring it up to your forehead or just? Uh, they they kind of met halfway and okay. uh, my forehead yeah. was fine and the screen was not. Okay. Yep. Hey, that's cute. It is. I think yeah. The other thing I've got is I've got a hot shiny pink. Game Boy Micro at home, <laughs> but I want to mod with a Zero, because that's just about yay big. Yes, I have it's a Game so Boy cute. Micro. I was lucky enough, my wonderful wife, girlfriend at the time, bought me the Famicom limited edition one in the maroon and gold. <laughs> uh, and I've been trying like stink to get a um, battery for it recently. Unfortunately, Amazon appear to have a batch in. They are the Advance SP batteries, mislabeled and misboxed, uh-huh. as the Game Boy Micro batteries. I've had three of them, two of them from eBay, they all just come straight from Amazon, and it's the wrong battery. It's not been fun. Right. So. Yeah, you've had to send them back. I it's have. you time. Yes, and effort and complaint. Yeah. Oh, they're full-size controllers. Uh-huh. USB, Ooh, is it? No. no. Just proprietary, because they, they don't want you USBing this. Is it proprietary and original? <laughs> it, it, it has that Nintendo power plug feel to it. Uh-huh. Game Boy Advance SP charger look to it to me. Fantastic. But, uh, oh. So the great thing about these for modding is they do look kind of spot on and well considered. Oh yeah. There are some good cases out there that look like the original Nintendo in this, but some of the details are just a bit off. Which, yeah, as a designer, kind of works me. Yes. I can it's, completely. It's not quite right. Well, well this, this one, one comes with the HDMI. Yeah. Well, maybe the C64 did, but. Any power supply? Uh, uh, we actually have a micro USB cable. Okay. If the uh, USB ports on the adapter are accessible at present. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that. <laughs> yeah. This is right. It's not micro USB. To this is indeed. Yeah. The plastics and the feel and everything on this. Already, actually, I think. So yeah, good. This one. Ah, right. Oh, we might as well use that. I'll just dismantle it first and then we can plug it in. So, <laughs> that's a good quality cable. Nice and long. We like this. Cool. I'd be very surprised if it's much Ooh. different board from the uh, C64. Shall I move my uh, ISP bits out of the way? That's um, that's actually one thing to be aware of when you're kind of taking these things apart, um, and also things like iPhones and stuff as well. If you're dismantling them, always be really careful when you've got the case um, screws taken out. Be really careful when you take the the two halves apart because often they'll have um, either little wires or ribbon cables, um, yep. and they're easier to kind of like tear them out accidentally when. Yeah. So that's the button door to board. Yeah. And then it's, that's got some heckin' shielding on it on the main really PCB. Does. Yeah. So. Yes, having replaced the hard drive in my iPod with a... If you're opening an iPod, there's some very short ribbon cables in there. Oh, yeah. Don't just pull it apart, yeah, because bad things one. will happen. <coughs> Have you seen the AirPods? 
Oh, the, the oh, new the little... teardown of those. I haven't Chandler, seen the teardown, is it? Yeah, it's it's a uh, flex PCB folded over three or four times. Oh, good grief. So you kind of unfold it and it's kind of flowers out into this complex, uh, really tiny flex PCB. Good it's grief. It's an amazing piece of engineering. Oh, I did uh, I did watch, there was a bloke who was travelling around and he was living in China at the time oh, and yeah. he, he went on a mission to put a headphone port yeah. back it's in his, uh, his new iPhone. Yeah. Managed it. Uh, on, like you say, a, 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 he had it printed there, a flex PCB. Yep. Uh, it, uh, it took some work, but... Because he, he did the proper Shenzhen thing. <laughs> Instead of just going around the markets like I do normally and kind of like, stroke all the switches, yep. he actually produced stuff, sourced stuff, yep. made it there, which was... He, yeah, how, he, how he, built, he built his own iPhone, didn't he, from scratch? He got all the bits. I, that was that a, one? Yeah, that's the one he did prior to the yeah, adding yeah. the headphone socket. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry... Dude, you were amazing. I've forgotten your name. I'm sure someone can furnish chat with it with any luck. Yeah. Um, cool. So, what are we up to? I think my favourite about that, just going back to that, was um, when he was getting the display made for it because he actually um, he had to get the different bits of the display like bonded together oh, with gosh. like the uh, optically clear adhesive. <laughs> um, Touch and screens, had, not even once. They had a special machine that was like an ultrasonic uh, bubble remover. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so when they when they put the adhesive on to bond it, they put the whole thing into this ultrasonic um, yeah bubble right. remover machine yeah and it like sucked all the bubbles out yeah <laughs> I, I'm tempted to use you just for that it's when you're doing kind of the resin testing as well you have the vacuum yes. machine to pull out the bubbles um, just so you don't get bubbles in your final moulds and things this is oh, something I've been looking into the closest I was yeah. going to get to that was standing there with a, a paint stripping heat gun. Yeah, and tapping it occasionally. Yeah. Strange parts. Strange parts is the kind of made my own iPhone. Ah. Put, a, put a headphone socket back in it. Blog. Indeed. Thank um, you. It's a good view of kind of how you should do Shenzhen. Yeah. Yeah. I think his name is actually Strange, isn't it? His surname. Right. I think that's why it's called mm -hmm. Strange Parts. Cool. Can't remember his first name. I don't know if it's Chris. I want to see. I want to see Chris. I, Chris I would Strange love it if it was Jonathan, Strange. but I don't think it is. <laughs> if it's a doctor, we'll take that as well. Oh, doctor. That yeah. would be. Also perfect. Does he have a PhD? <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Strange, yeah. Yeah. Right, here we go. Oh, oh, oh we're in. Are you in? Oh, is the shield enough? Oh, that's not. Is it, uh, top edge, you've got some. I think it's actually. Is it folded is under it the PCB and screwed through? I don't know. I think it may be soldered along there, maybe. Who could be? We don't care, though, do we, Sandy? I think it is. Um, Smudge it. There's a screw here that I can take out as well. Yeah, let's go for it. So, oh, is there any more screws? Uh, no, it's coming, it's Sandy. It's coming. <laughs> oh, oh. Trying to get these cables out. But yeah, we oh, tried headbutting them. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, there's nothing on there. <laughs> Blame me. <laughs> There's not even the collection of uh, capacitors from the. Wow. There's like one chunky chip like one, HDMI. One massive capacitor and the. Uh, for power buffering. Is yeah. that a capacitor? Yeah. Yeah. That's a big ass cap. And a tiny chip. <laughs> there's, uh, there's loads of stuff under there. We'll just tear this off, will I? Uh, Spudge it off, yeah, see what happens. Oh, oh that, oh, that there came we go. Oh. No, it's ah. just thermal paste, is it? Okay, yeah, yeah it's a stick, sticky pad. That's what it is, yeah. That does look Ooh, a lot like blue tech. That's really interesting, actually. That's weird. Okay, save that for our Pi 3B experiment. It's hard to describe. Well, stick it on that. your finger and touch a soldering iron to the other side, and let's see how thermally conductive it is. It's really hard <laughs> to describe what that's like. It's like kind of like solid blue tech that. Oh, oh, actually, there. See, like a thermal chew it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna. Okay, so not even going to lick it. This architecture is looking awfully familiar. It is. <laughs> well, this seems to be an R16 instead of an A20. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So that'll be rock chip rather than uh, wall yes. winner probably. And then we've got the flash, the RAM. Yeah. And then the other big chip down there, which mm, I don't oh, know. This one. Power Display, management. Power. Yeah. Again. Um, so it's AXP223. If uh, someone can let's okay. see. get let's one let's have a Google. AXP223. Yeah. XP223. What we need some now is like game show thinking music. XP223. For all. Power management unit for all winner system on chip. Cool. There you go. For all winner system on chip. So it says. 
So is the R16 actually not a rock chip? I like how it well, says so R16 side, CD. Uh, side B. Uh, <laughs> Does it say side A? Oh yeah, side A. This will just give us teardowns of the snares, won't it? Nice. It's like, it's like oh, a, oh, it's an all winner CPU R16. Right, there it's we like, go. It's like a cassette tape. It's got CD and side B on it. <laughs> on the PCB. Proper retro. Yeah. For anyone in the chat who's under like 20, ask your parents what a cassette tape is. <laughs> <laughs> or an LP if you really want to go back. So it's rude. It's not, it's not a rude thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, yeah. That's, that's it then. And you can't slide load games on here. Nintendo are a bit more churlish about that for some reason. The themes. Yeah. Well. I... So what? How do the how do the connectors plug in? How do the controllers plug yeah. in there? That's I'm not sure. If you got let's there's one un, unpacked. Oh. Ah, okay. Because it looks like the original port. Yeah, it's interesting because it looks like it must have like. Um, do you only use half of it? Do they flip? Oh no, they don't. Ah, oh, that's right. They're. Me. But they've well, got stuff behind they, them. Yeah, what is going on there with the stuff behind the ports? Do you pull the front plate off or something weird? I can't remember how this... I've got one of these, but I can't remember how... <laughs> we are smart what? people. Does it flip? Uh, oh, yeah, it can... flips down, I think, doesn't it? That's uh, <laughs> not <laughs> easily, by the look of it. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, that's... Mm, yeah. I'm not sure I approve of that. Because, <laughs> they're, yeah, they're basically Wii connectors, aren't they? Ah, okay. that's where I've yeah. seen it before. Yeah, yeah. Yes, the bottom of the, the, so the Wii for the. Uh... Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're not that small, Sandy. Has, has anyone plugged one of these <laughs> into a, a Wii mote? <laughs> Probably. I, I think wonder if you could use it as a classic controller on the the Wii or the Wii U. And I think be... vice versa. I think you can use the Wii controllers with this. Oh, well, okay. I believe. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's mm. fantastic. Right. Yeah. yeah. Nice. But all of these look very moddable with the pie as well. They do yes. have oodles of room. Yep. And so I think they're quite easy to get working with uh, the yeah, remotes. Or yeah, yeah, they're very easy to get working it's with. It's standard Bluetooth, I yeah. believe. Yeah. The Nunchuck is Bluetooth thing, but I think the I think the controllers. I think right. I think we sell. Do we not sell? We used to have an adapter because yeah. you could actually put an edge PCB in there. I think. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was going to look on our shop, but anyway, we'll mm. get a pie in there. Get a yeah. Get, the future. Get Pi Phi B plus on. Cool. Yep. Right. Okay. I think that's it. I think we're done. Matt, welcome yeah. again to the Bilge Tank. It has been a pleasure. Thank Have you very much. Before? I don't believe so. I think this is my uh, proverbial cherry. Cool. There it goes. I'm so, so broken. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thanks, thanks all. We'll see you again for another retro Bilge Tank. I hope so. It'd be fantastic. When we've actually managed to do some stuff. And in our progress has <laughs> happened it. indeed on the yeah. ISP. Oh, yes. Hmm? I said <coughs> Pikeade. Pikeade, yeah. No, nothing happened on Pikeade. No. 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 Nothing soon. No. <laughs> no. Uh, keep your ears out. Right. I'm not see you later, at folks. Bye bye. We're down in the corner. We shouldn't be down in the corner. Sorry, I'm just going to fix us down in the corner. It's, oh, it's annoying oh, me. Oh, oh. We're still here. We're still here. Ah, hey! <laughs> yeah! Oh! Bye, everybody! Bye! Bye. Thank you! Again. <laughs>